Well, who do you think are the best negotiators on earth? Children. Of course. Yes. <laughs> you do have children or grandchildren? You do. Oh, they're great, aren't they? They're great, you know. Sometimes you believe there's a connection between cleaning my room and wash the kitchen and whatever, you know. This is really crazy because they are, they are so much more spontaneous than we are. And they are so much more creative. And they are so, you know, much more than we have forgotten. So one of the aim today is to wake up the children inside of you in a negotiation. Because, you know, this is how you should be. This is how you should be again. So let's just still negotiate just like children. It's not because we are in a serious environment. Look how serious we look like today. It's not because we are in a serious environment that we have to take ourselves seriously when we negotiate with people. 2015 is going to be a super great year. Why are you laughing? <laughs> it's going to be great, <laughs> isn't it? You see here the belt around it? It's going to be cool. Why is it going to be so cool? Because for negotiators, I can promise you're going to get almost what you want, everything what you want. Because there are many opportunities when the bell is tight, you can get much more. Who doesn't agree with this? Yeah? You get a bigger bell, all right. <laughs> so imagine, imagine a world where you could get almost everything from your employee and from your unions. Wouldn't that be cool? So, and make them happy. I love this photo, don't you? <laughs> it's really great. All these people happy. We forget to be happy today. We, for we forget about happiness. We forget about taking time. We forget about this. But happiness and optimism is so important. And it's contagious, you see. You know, especially in the first row, they all start laughing. This lady is just, you know, leshel. She, in German, she says leshel. Yeah, I love it. It's really nice. So, define your objectives. That's the first thing. I told you, most people fail because they don't know what they want. So if you don't determine what you really want precisely, you have a lot of chance to fail. Then, information. What is it all about them? What do they want? What can you share with them? Then strategy, you know, there is many strategy as strategists around the planet. Yeah, my recommendation is to be simple, no gas industry, simple and flexible. You know, as people usually tend to say in a meeting, right, you know, I'm, I'm talking on the union side now, all right? We will not talk about this issue unless you talk about this one first. See what I mean? And then here goes the sumo against sumo again, because it can't work. You must be happy to talk about this issue first in order then to have them accept you to then bring this other issue on the table in a second. Who cares if it's first or second? But sometimes for principle's sake, people say no. It's no, it's me, it's my issue first. I want to be right. The French are very much like this. I don't know about the Swiss, but the French are very much like this, you know. As the Brits, which I love it, I love the Brits because they better be rich than right. They say it's better be rich than right in a negotiation. As in France, better be right than rich, which is really <laughs> stupid. <laughs> it is. It is so stupid. <coughs> but I, I've met lots of people like this, you know. Better be rich than right. OK, then you should have a wish list item. What is a wish list item? You have the main issues first, and then you identify the secondary issues, which I call the wish list. So the negotiation process, the preparation phase, is what I call the ego phase. 
Why do I call this the ego phase? It's because you, you must only think about what you want. Then, when you start talking to people, you step in what I call the no ego phase. Is the no ego is I just focus on the person. I'm telling her within the five first minutes, this is what I would like to talk about. And then I shut up, which is sometimes very difficult for negotiators. I shut up and I listen to what they want. Why is that so important? Because Listen to me carefully. That sentence is the essence of the whole process of negotiation. Negotiation is giving the other party what they want on your terms. Giving the other party what they want on your terms. Then the proposal phase is the nego phase, which is quite cool, isn't it? Ego, no ego, egal nego. Great, isn't it? Great to memorize. <laughs> Great to remember, because if you do this right, you will never fail anymore. You do the ego, you really know what you want. Then you go really create, set up the right climate, ask the people what they want. Then this gives you ability to propose, to make a proposal. Because in the proposal, you will give them all or part of what they want on your terms. Are you with me? That's difficult. I know. You know what? <laughs> if it was simple, what's your first name? Catherine. 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 Kath, if this was simple, I would be in a yacht in the Bahamas, probably <laughs> with Ed somewhere, you know, you sit on my boat, you know, with a sailing boat. Someone mentioned sailing. I love sailing. You know, I would be on my boat. <laughs> That's how it looks like most of the time between unions and uh, HR and, and, you know, CEOs. It looks like this, yeah? It looks like egotiation. What I call egotiation, <laughs> yeah? And what is really negotiation? Negotiation is not sumo egotiation. It's aikido or judo. Who does any sports like this? Any of you? Yeah? What is what is judo does do for you? Judo is using the the energy of the other party to reach your goal. Same is Aikido, okay? So what's really interesting there is that you will use what's in the request of the other party in order then to ask what is important to you. And then you will really nigo, use the energy. Just a little experience here. Who of you asked this question in the meeting first? What are we going to talk about during this meeting? Just raise your hand, okay? Now, <coughs> who of you asked this preferred question? How are we going to do the meeting? How is it going to be organized, right? Now, who of you asked themselves, who is going to attend the meeting? Because if he or she attends, I'm not attending. <laughs> not as far as this, but who of you just, the who is very important? None of you? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm using them. That's, the that's right. That's right. But it's not it's not your preferred. You have learned to do it. Okay. But you know when you when you have learned to do it, sometimes it gets tricky you know? <laughs> in in very stressy situations. Okay. And who of you in a meeting ask the, the 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 first question? Why are we holding this meeting? I need to understand. I need to understand the goals. Yeah. Okay. So you recognize yourself most, and you know, in negotiators, are a little bit. Sometimes you have to be a little bit uh, everywhere. Okay. And here, the focus: facts, form, feelings, and future. Okay. I would like to end my speech by telling you that when you negotiate, it will always cost you something. Negotiation will always cost you something. Either you go deadlock. Okay? Either you accept to make concessions, but both will cost you something. All right? So let's imagine that you negotiate salaries with people. It's going to cost you, a person is coming to the HR department and says, unless you increase my salary of 10%, otherwise I strike. Okay? So 
this is going to cost him money, but it's going to cost you money. Maybe you will have some social and political pressure behind it. And of course, time, depending on what this person does, is going to play with, for you or against you. Are you with me? But then, if you go in negotiation, you're going to have to make concessions on that. And of course, you will create a precedent unless you set it up that it's the first and only time you do it and you will not do it anymore. Yeah? And if you've done it and said it, are you still credible? Thanks, Edwin Cohen, very much. And thank you for having me today. It was a great pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you. I'm Ed Cohen, editor of Global Business News and chairman of Global Business News Conferences. New York, California, Europe, Canada, Latin America. Very happy to have Christine Morlay as our keynote today. Excellent presentation, very people-oriented. I think it was a great explanation in a practical way of a very complicated topic, negotiation with difficult people and people that you're not familiar with. She brought it down to practical takeaways and understanding techniques, yes but, no but maybe, uh, different stances. And I congratulate Christine Morlay for her achievements and welcome her back. My name is Brenda Levis. My company is New York City Navigator based in Midtown Manhattan. It was very interesting to have some of uh, what Christine presented be applicable to past experiences negotiating with my employee. And in addition to that, um, my greatest takeaway was probably uh, just taking the ego out of negotiation. I think that's something that is going to be really easy to remember. Uh, my name is Carmen Minea. I work for Syngenta as a global mobility manager. I was delighted actually to participate um, to the presentation. And I think the best thing that I took from the negotiation technique, um, you know, presentation was the fact that um, you have to go in with an open-minded, with a clear agenda, but also be flexible about what you want to achieve at the end. There has to be a win-win solution. The win-win solution is not necessarily a 50-50 solution. Hi, my name is Chris Littleland. I'm an international HR uh, director. Um, working mainly in the technology. The real thing I liked about Christine's presentation was the personalization um, within negotiation uh, and the way collaboration works and also the win-win scenario doesn't have to be a percentage gain. Um, you learn a lot from the experience and tools and techniques as well as concepts and the blend that uh, can come through. So, fantastic presentation, well done to Christine, thoroughly enjoyed it, hope to meet her again in the future, and really gained a lot from uh, what she spoke about. Christian Bovenkamp, the medicines company. I'm in the HR arena there, indeed our endeavors outside of the United States. Uh, really appreciated the discussion we've had earlier, specifically certain insights on how to uh, do my negotiations even better with the unions and keep up the good work and uh, see you soon. Bye.